Hey everyone, it's your favorite narrator from this part of Ohio. That's right, Brian Von VA. What's the craziest murder hobo incident that you've witnessed or enacted? Leave it down in the comments below, you little degenerates. But first, our sponsor, Arch Villain Games, with their upcoming Kickstarter. Aaron Vaughn's Guide to Death and Beyond is an upcoming 350-page tome of dark spells, unholy monsters, arcane craftable items, and undying mega-bosses for D&D 5th edition. That answers one question. Can a party go on after a TPK? It's packed with plenty of new content and original mechanics like an undead grafting system, an undying ship that you can upgrade across your adventures, eight new races, 10 mega bosses, and the profane lairs they dwell in, arcane familiars, dark subclasses, and everything you need to craft an accursed tale for your players to enjoy. Enter a world where the power of death is weakened. Watch your comrades fall, only to rise again as an undead, and embark on a campaign that takes your party from level 1 to level 10, shrouded in the horrors of a setting agnostic story, sure to grip your whole table. The Kickstarter begins on May 15th. Support the release to gain access to rewards like a free Liquid Core Soul River D20, superb discounts off the final release, highly detailed original miniatures, and more. Links are in the description below. This happened two days ago as we were facing a lich who had somehow made his entire lair into his phylactery. After defeating him but trying to figure out how to destroy his lair phylactery, we were overwhelmed by the remaining minions. Oh, a lot of them. One character went down, two went to see a couple of NPC alchemists hiding nearby in the lair, and my character used invisibility. Another NPC artificer earlier gave us a useful button, <laughs> cough, cough, quote, quote, so my character retrieved it from the Fallen Companion's jacket and pressed it, hoping it would help. Three turns later, there was a radioactive crater where the lich lair and everyone else inside of it used to be. The useful button triggered a small nuclear bomb the NPC artificer hid in the lair, but for some reason, he never bothered to tell us. We could have avoided several sessions of combat and careful resource management if we got far enough from it and made the bomb destroy the phylactery and the lich inside of it. Instead, the whole party and two admittedly useless NPCs were vaporized, and we had to spend four months being wished back to life because it turns out we killed the wrong lich anyway! We still had work to do! Yep! The murder hobo was the DM, and in the most villain from a 80s comic book movie type of way. I bounced the janitor's head off the sink until he stops moving. Uh, the, the janitor? Uh-huh, the janitor. He doesn't even have stats. He's, uh, hold on, let me see, check, uh, let me check my strength. Uh, target 12, where are you going with this? I put on the guy's uniform. Uh, okay. I, I guess. I walk into the break room and start lobbing Molotovs! Hey, wait, you need a disguise just to... Uh, well, screw it. Alarms start blaring. The sprinklers come on. Guards start running in. I have more Molotovs! Uh, so much for get in, get the data, and get out, huh? We all wound up dead. Max Tack. Wasn't intended to be one, but in a Warhammer 40k tabletop, my character just sort of turned into one while surviving Tyranids went from a bookworm to Rambo over the course of an in-game year. I think his highest point was when I realized he had high enough strength and dexterity by the end of the game to just carry around a two-man turret, Halo style. So, I want to preface this with, I am a terrible and toxic player, but a decent and fair dungeon master. As a player, I essentially enslaved an entire village and took over the local mine that provided funds for the village. I then set up a racketeering operation. The DM at the time had no idea what to do. Played a Pokemon version of D&D, sent a Hitmonlee and Psyduck on a mission to assassinate a cult leader. The leader was a sweet old lady. I confused her, then kicked her into a pool where she died of natural causes. <clears throat> Drowning. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and I played a barbarian that was contracted to get a payment for a blacksmith, brought the guy's head and purse back to the blacksmith after carrying the head through town. While playing in a Storm King's Thunder game, we were traveling to Yatar for a side quest and encountered some guards who tried to extort us for gold. Oh, it wasn't much, but my character is a paladin who is also a civilar, i.e. a lieutenant, of the Water Devian Guard. So she wasn't having that kind of nonsense. She asked to speak to the captain, and they refused to let us. In rapid succession, the following happened. Our 13-year-old tiefling sorceress decided to prove to the guards that she could get past them by Misty stepping behind them, which got her arrested. My paladin took umbrage to them, catching the sorceress in a man trap. The guard my character was talking to drew his halberd and attacked. Initiative was rolled, reinforcements came. Tiefling sorceress racked up 19 kills in two rounds. We quickly realized that if we continued at this rate, we'd end up slaughtering the entire town guard of Yatar. And considering we were supposed to be the, you know, good guys, cough cough, we didn't actually want to do that. So we surrendered. We got sentenced to death, but some weird clown dude from the plane of limbo decided we were cool and broke us out of prison. Session 1. A Goliath Barbarian, a Human Rogue, a Tabaxi Druid, and a Tiefling Warlock, me, meet at a bar. Our Barbarian tries to flirt with a barmaid. She fails horribly, causing the maid to feel insulted, and slaps the Barbarian. Well, the Barbarian takes it as an insult in turn, and powders the maid's skull, intentionally. It turns out the bar was filled with off-duty guards. The man in the back said, Everyone attack! And it turned into a barroom blitz. We get the absolute best rolls of the campaign, the most nat 20s I've ever seen in a session ever. The guards are missing almost all of their attacks or otherwise dealing paper cut damage. Well, at some point the DM just says, F it, I want to see how far this train wreck goes. We clear out the bar. Our rogue says we need to get rid of the evidence and starts chucking bottles of moonshine all over the place while the rest of us loot the corpses. Rogue then sets fire to the bar. The place is in flames in seconds. On our way out, the DM says we hear a soft whimpering. Turns out that one of the barmaids locked herself in one of the pantries. Well, we still have time, so we try to rescue her. Our luck seems to have finally run out, emphasis on seems to. We all fail to open the door or convince her to leave, so I say, fuck it, and Eldritch blasts the door off its hinges and almost kill the barmaid with shrapnel. She's just unconscious, thank God. We drag her body out of the inferno of a building only to find the active duty town guards surrounding the place. Our barbarian looks at us with a cocky grin. We tell her not to do it. The barbarian just goes, I rage. Oh, look, our luck didn't run out. We depopulate the town. Everyone agrees not to say anything as we quietly leave the town and try to start again in another region. By the way, we're supposed to be good aligned. The DM has his head in his hands as he calls the session there. He tells us that he'll let us know if there's a next session. Two weeks later, hey, DM says he's up for running another session and to bring our character sheets. The DM starts to introduce our characters again. Wait, are we redoing session one? Ah, screw it, I roll with it. DM narrates me waking up and disentangling myself from several sleeping women and stumbling into a bathroom and throwing up violently. That moon sugar was really powerful, and you still have some trouble deciding if that dream you had of murdering a town of innocence was real or not. The past month has been a blur, as you spent most of it in a drunken stupor of drugs, alcohol, and fornication. Okay, I think this is a pretty cool hand wave to smooth things over, so I play along and go about my day as the others are introduced. Rogue has gotten himself arrested and has to do community service at the local charity under Gaius. Druid also got really, really high and spent the month thinking he was wild-shaped as the mayor's guard dog. He wasn't, and everyone just thought he was insane and were too afraid to do anything about him because he actually bit someone who tried. 
Barbarian woke up in a barn with the horse who was very insistent on always being in line of sight with her. No other explanation. The DM never tried to do anything with the horse. It would just follow the barbarian and watch her. Wouldn't even let her ride it and always stayed just out of reach of the barbarian. We started doing quests and one of them had us going around trying to find rumors of an evil cult's activities. DM being an awesome DM, had made up several variations of a rumor so that the townies we asked would tell us something slightly different, but all leading to basically the same conclusion. Oh, except for one, where the cult had seemed to have had no success converting a town and decided to raise the place, killing everyone. There was only one survivor who had tried to escape by hiding in the tavern, but was dragged into the middle of town and forced to witness the horror as her wounded body could barely move. She had gone mad, and she believed the cult only spared her to be a priestess of the coming order and to spread word that all who stand against them will perish. That's like the biggest M. Night Shyamalan twist I've ever seen in my life. Had someone show up for one session as a barbarian. One of the characters, a 12-year-old tiefling, had been sent to an orphanage by guards after being spotted alone and telling them she had no family. When the party arrived at the orphanage, the tiefling is leading a mini revolt. Nothing major, you know, kid stuff. As the matron asks for help to control the children, the barbarian charged in and killed eight orphans. Well, he was arrested and put to death all in that one session. Well, I ended a year long campaign by myself. I, a lawful good platinum dragon paladin, saw that my party of seven other players were getting increasingly murderous and neglectful of the consequences of their actions. So, during the campaign, the party managed to make their way to the capital of the Empire. During the second night in the capital, four party members were captured. The four of us who remained went on to search for them, only to fall into a similar ambush, cough cough, and get captured. During the trial before the Emperor, the charges against the whole party were announced, with the crimes the party committed described in fine detail. And then the prosecutor called to the stand his prime witness, which was me. I was released from my anti-magic chains, told all present in the court what the party had done. Needless to say, everyone at the table was stunned. Out of the party members, two got sentenced to death, three got sentenced to lobotomy, and the two remaining were sentenced to life in jail. During the whole final verdict of the DM, I couldn't stop grinning. I hope you rolled high dexterity because honestly, you're gonna be running out of that house. Homebrew, party of four. I am a half-elf sorcerer with poison dragon draconic bloodline. The campaign the DM created was incredibly difficult, but it was on purpose. It was a dark fantasy world, dark souls and berserk inspired. Because of this, I was given, allowed only one cantrip and one spell, or two spells, or two cantrips. Now this may sound kind of boring, but it actually makes you think of really creative ways to play. So I chose Burning Hands and Poisonous Gas. A few sessions in, we're hiding in the walls of the hideout of an evil cult. They begin the summoning of an eldritch demigod. Not the big bad evil guy, but still a huge problem. Not to mention they had 10 or so hostages. No way just the four of us could stop these 20 guys. So I look at the DM and say, is my poisonous gas flammable? He paused for a solid moment, thinking about how making it so might affect the rest of the campaign. He looks at me and goes, well, it will take quite a while before you'll be able to learn another spell or cantrip, so sure. So I fill the whole room with this toxic gas. It's a bit weak, so my party put on thick pieces of cloth over their faces to stay safe. We then move away and go outside the building as our half-orc lays down a line of oil following us out. I light the oil with burning hands, the fire leads into the abandoned church the cult was using as a hideout, the gas lights, and the entire building just straight up exploded. I was only allowed to do this because the summoning would have been stopped by the cult members being too weak anyway. So the DM changed the story a bit so that they were totally going to properly summon him 
and I murdered 20 enemies and 10 innocent sacrifices. My character then became a pyromaniac and, uh, what would the term be? A uh, poison maniac? Yeah, we'll go with that. I don't know. But he just got a taste for destruction and fell in love with it. I had to swap from a gentle, methodical, careful sorcerer to an explosion and poison obsessed bastard. Needless to say, I almost blew up the entire party many, many times. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and let us know what was the craziest murder hobo incident that you've witnessed or enacted down in the comments below. We love you all. See you next time. Bye for now.